Okay, so uh, so when you know you when when you're in high school, you learn about uh, the periodic table of elements, right? And you have this periodic table that lists all the elements, and there's rows and columns, and there are certain relationships between the elements in the rows and the columns, right? And so a lot of chemistry is based on those relationships of the elements and some ordering that you can do of the periodic table. In the same way in physics, we have our standard model of particle physics, which gives us a set of particles that we can relate to one another in very similar way as the periodic table does for, for elements. And so you know, we have things that we call uh, leptons, and you know, we have all, all these other uh, weird names that we come up with for all these particles that we can classify and look at all their properties. And so we have a nice model for all of those fundamental particles that are related in a specific way, um, and it all makes sense. It's a nice complete package that explains almost everything we see and all the, almost all of the uh, experiments that we have been able to do. Except that there are a couple of things that tell us that the standard model is not correct. Uh, one of them is dark matter, because dark matter does not fall into this uh, nice uh, paradigm of the standard model uh, that we have. Another one is dark energy. Uh, dark energy also does not uh, fall into the standard model. And a third one is that in the standard model, there are these particles called neutrinos, which are made in many different places in the universe. They are made are given off by radioactive elements when they decay. And in the standard model, the neutrinos have no mass. But it turns out that by measurements that we've been able to make, uh, we know now uh, that neutrinos do have mass. It's a very tiny mass, very small uh, compared to other particles, but they do have mass. And that is not explained in the standard model. In order for neutrinos to have mass, there have to be other types of neutrinos that interact with them so that they're able to have mass under, under the standard model assumptions that we, we use. And it is possible that if there are other types of neutrinos that we've never seen before, these are called uh, sterile neutrinos or right-handed neutrinos. There are different names for them. So these neutrinos that have never been seen, it is possible that one of those neutrinos could be dark matter. And so that would be nice because it explains two things at the same time. We know that neutrinos have mass and that, that doesn't, uh, it's not predicted in the standard model. In order for neutrinos to have mass, there have to be new species of neutrinos that we haven't discovered yet. And so if one of those turns out to be dark matter, then you can answer both questions at the same time. So that's why it's an interesting uh, possibility for what dark matter could be.